Ins and Outs Podcast, episode 27. We're here with the boy, Jack Biddy. Say what's up, man. How's it going, guys? Hey, I'm so thankful you got on, man. You were the first guest that I've had on Zoom. So we're trying something new. We're hustling. We're out here. God dang, man. God dang. <laughs> if you don't know Jack, he is a trying to be poker pro, or are you a poker bro, pro, dude? Tell me. I mean, I have. I graduated college two years ago, and... It's pretty difficult to just make it as a poker pro. So I do have like a regular nine to five job, but mm. poker poker is my passion. And I'm really dipping my feet in the water right now in hopes that down the road, I can just play poker because it's like the dream job. You get to travel the world, meet awesome people and play a game for a living. So you can't, you can't really beat it. And so I see you doing poker news. I don't know if it's GG poker, but something. Are you making content for like the poker scene? Yeah, so... The poker content creation scene is, is really cool. There's a bunch of people who make poker vlogs. They go to the casino and they record themselves playing. You're probably familiar with some of the guys. And I I grew up like watching those people. And I said, hey, I want to do this too. I, I don't think there's anything that would stop me from being successful at it. Mm -hmm. So I, I took a shot and I actually did a road trip where I packed my car. And with only a hundred dollars, I drove from New York to Vegas and I stopped at casinos on the way and I vlogged the whole trip and I stopped at casinos and I funded the whole trip, gas, food, everything. I slept in my car, like pretty much every night. I had a couple of friends that I stayed with on the way and I ran it up and I made like a little documentary on YouTube and I, it, like it didn't, it didn't blow up or anything. Like it got a couple thousand views, but uh, some people at these like poker industries, poker news, poker org, they found my videos and they said, Hey, like, come work with us. We, we really like what you're doing. I think you'd be a great fit. And that kind of started, it really opened the doors. I got to meet some really amazing people in the industry and start networking. And the rest was history. The past year has been, been a dream for me. I've gotten to meet all my like celebrity poker heroes. I've got to interview some really cool people and it's, it's only the beginning. I'm really excited for what's coming next. So do you see your future going more towards like you playing poker or do you think it's going to go more towards in the direction of being on the media side maybe with your own personal or with maybe like poker news or whatever, which, which do you think you're heading in the direction towards? Honestly, a solid mix of both because to really, to make money just playing poker, you have to be so good. There's, there's all these just robot humans that yeah. I'm never going to, I'm never going to be as good as them. Like I'm very confident in my skills, but I don't think I could ever be top, top level. So being able to make content and when you're making content, even if you lose, if you get killed, that's sometimes really good content. It's like, it, it makes it always a win regardless. You just tell the honest story. So it's it's honestly going to be a 50-50 mix because I want to compete at the high stakes. I want to be playing final tables for millions of dollars. But mm. at the same time, I, I really want to tell that story and share it to an audience. So the reason why you got on, the reason I even have this opportunity is because I make like TikTok clips and stuff and you put and you commented on one of them after I was talking about how, my God, I lose so much in poker, <laughs> dude. Thank, thankfully, our buy-in is only 10 bucks, right? But we've probably, I probably lost like $350 or maybe like 250 and my buddies, I mean, they're down more, you know, 500, sure. 600 bucks. But I don't even really know what good poker is like you I, I, you say the pros i'm talking about phil helmuth daniel negrani like the the main guys what makes them different than maybe a poker pro who just knows how to play like game theory optimal or something like how what classifies you as like a pro how do you get that good what's the difference between like a you know so there's there's a lot of different kinds of poker now and and a lot of those big names that you would see on tv 10 15 years ago the game was a lot different back then and someone like daniel negrano he was like the man back then and his thing he just had like amazing reads at the table he had a solid very solid fundamental approach to the game but back then there weren't a million different training sites there weren't solvers they so could figure out exactly how to play no one really knew what was going on so the people that did have an idea just made so much money and they really reaped the benefits 
now it's so easy. There's like so many training sites. There's really, really good coaches out there. The game has changed dramatically. So if you're playing online, I, I take it when you, when you and your friends are losing like the $10 back to back, it's probably online where there's someone sitting in Belarus or Russia playing 30 tables at a time, just like preying on college kids. that just want to take a shot and high school kids. I just want to take a shot. Uh, they're doing that all day. So online's a lot different than live. I think you can get to the point where if you go to a casino and play one, two, like a $200 buy-in, you can get to a point where you can be profitable at that table, like pretty easily. And I think you're a smart guy. You'd be able to get to that point really quick. Mm-hmm. And online just a different beast because of the nature of the people who play for a living playing 10 tables, as opposed to someone just wants to take a shot. They're going to play on one table with their 10 bucks. They mm-hmm. lose it, whatever. So if I wanted to become good, become profitable, you're saying like go to these casinos and because I guess people are more easily, easily exploitable, you know, you'll have the people who are maybe might be drunk or whatever, and you could be like, you know, just outplay them like a chat, right? Totally. So, so I mean, how, what would, like, if I want to get good to that point, what steps would I have to take as a beginner, like a novice poker player to start winning at those 200, you know, buying tables? Um, I feel like you're on the right path. It it is a lot of trial and error, but I lost a lot of money when I first started playing. And then you start to pick up on things. You start to understand, Hey, I keep getting killed in this specific spot. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. You start watching the poker vloggers. You see what they're doing. Maybe you watch a few. There's a lot of, a ton of YouTube content that is just really, really good. Um, and just having these conversations, like you're, you're on the right path. I, it's, it's one of those, it's a game where the more you learn, the less you know. Like, I feel like I'm mm. good right now, but I learned some new concept and I'm like, I had no idea. I've been butchering this my whole time. You just got to keep improving. And when you play a hand, I know so many people who aren't professionals, they just play recreationally. They'd be like, oh, I played this perfect. I played this perfect. How do you know? How do you know you played it perfect unless you're actually putting in the work and having those conversations? So you just got to try to keep improving every day. Hell yeah, dude. I feel that. So it's really, you're really saying just like get out there, keep playing, learn. I already watched some poker vlogs vlogs because I find them so interesting, dude. Like it's so fun to see somebody. And even when they have like ace king suited, they go all in, they lose. Like I just love the mentality where it's like, dude, they got fucking killed. But like they, they realize, well, that's part of the game. And I know long term I'll be profitable. And I like poker. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Maybe. It's all, it's all about the process. Um, you got to, Put yourself at a table where you think you have an edge and that edge is bigger than the rake. Let's say the house is taking 5%. If you think you're 5% better than the table, yeah, on any given night you could lose. On any given week you could lose. But if you just put in the hours and you, it's important to track everything. If you're tracking it and in the long run it's going up, that's all you can do. And just like grind out the volume and, you know, just trust the process. Mm-hmm. And where are you from, dude? I, I, I stalked your Instagram a little bit and I'm going to guess the East Coast or where? Yeah, so I'm born and raised upstate New York. I went to college right outside of New York City where I got to play. That's my junior year of college, pretty much when COVID happened. I was playing collegiate volleyball. My season got canceled and I just had so much extra free time. Ever, I'm not going into classes anymore. I'm just sitting in my room half the day. Mm. Um, I really started getting into poker and I discovered that there's a few like underground games in the city. And I played there. I played in like a poker club at my college where we would do $20, $40 buy-ins. But I was like, I was the junior playing with a bunch of freshmen. I had worked an internship that summer. I had some money saved up and I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go take my shot in the city and with the big boys. Mm -hmm. And that first time I played, I won like 300 bucks and thank God I won. Cause if I lost it, probably would have never gone back, but winning early on I was able to keep playing and who knows if I lost Maybe I wouldn't be here where I was today, but I would say next, I got so hooked on it. I, I, it was really eye opening when you play in these, when you start to play at a live table and you kind of know what you're doing because in New York or most places, it'll be the rich businessman that is probably making six figures, gets out of work, just wants to go have some drinks and like gamble a couple hundred bucks. They'll, mm-hmm. they'll show up for two hours. And if you're playing live, if you play two hours, there's a good chance you only get like four playable hands like you gotta it and re, if you're playing good poker you gotta be folding a 
large amount of the time when you're playing online and everything happens so quickly, you'll be playing a lot, but if you're playing live, it can be really slow. So these people will get super impatient and they'll just want to like go all in with six, seven suited. They want to just like make some crazy play. And me, I have like a somewhat solid of a background. I would just play really tight and just pounce on these drunk New Yorkers. And it was super eye opening. Then I, next thing you know, I'm, I'm driving to Mohegan sun in Connecticut and I'm sleeping in my car. I played like 15 hours, uh, back to back days, slept in my car, had like Adderall and an edible for breakfast and just grinded <laughs> out like the whole entire day. And like, I came home and I'm like, I tell my parents, like, I just made like a thousand bucks. And, and at first my parents were, sorry, I'm just going all. No, 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 dude, this is interesting as shit. Dude. <laughs> uh, this is interesting as fuck. Yeah. I, at first when I made like a good amount of money, my parents were like, okay, you had a good run. Like you probably shouldn't really keep gambling. Cause mm. you know, I've, I've good parents and they had their rightful concerns that I was just like going to a casino and gambling a ton. they at the time they, they knew nothing about poker or whatever, but I, I didn't really listen. And I knew that I had the potential to make a lot of money. So I kept going back and now my parents are all for it. They understand that I'm not just gambling. Like I, there's, I track everything. It's all about the long term. They see the content I'm making. They're all for it. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was kind of tough at the beginning to convince them that it's, it's a positive in my life. Dude, this is, I mean, that's, that's crazy, dude. And I think you're right. If you didn't have maybe that big win at first to boost you, you know, confidence mm-hmm. or just numerically, I mean, I guess you may not even be here, dude. You may have not even taken this journey. But one thing I do want to talk to you about is I saw your, your TikToks. You sent me some of your TikToks. And your TikToks aren't just poker, dude. You're really like wide. You talk about chess. You had one video that did great where you're using the AI Joe Rogan. Yeah. Right? Was so, that you who made that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm like a huge nerd. I like video games. I like just like game theory in general. And I've been really into chess lately. There's just a huge chess boom right now. Chess is like unbelievably popular. Yes. Um, the, the audience is just like so much wider than poker so i made a i put so much effort into my poker videos and they like they do decently i put no effort into a chess video i made some stupid video and it's getting like millions of views so and i thought it was funny so i'm kind of just like milking it and reaping the rewards of that as much as possible yeah as you should yeah but like long term i'm I'm definitely going to focus on poker that's what i'm passionate about Uh, i want to get into like commentating poker i i've done one live stream i got to commentate behind the booth and that was super cool i got to watch all the action and and give my thoughts, tell some jokes. That's something that I really want to do more down the road. Um, Mm. Yeah. The the poker world's so cool. There's massive tournaments going on all around the world. Uh, I've gotten to travel to London. I got to be in Vegas over the summer. I got to be in the Bahamas a few months ago. There's opportunities everywhere for a lot of different type of people. And so how do you, so you got these opportunities by making this vlog, like originally it started from this vlog, they got in contact with you and then everything really stemmed from that. Am I right? Once I released the vlog, I'd post it into Reddit and that's where I actually got traction first on Reddit. Mm. They took a like, they took a liking in the video and the community manager, manager at poker news, he runs their Twitter and they have like a hundred K followers on Twitter. He gave me a shout out. And that was like the first really, really cool thing that happened. And from there, it just, it was like a domino effect. Damn, dude. So when you make when you're making this content, you know the the uh, the chess content, the Joe Rogan AI Joe Biden voice, which I thought was so funny. I was like, what is your goal with that? Is it just to like get some views, or do, are you trying to like build the Twitch? Are you trying to make money from it, or just doing it for fun? What is it, or you know everything? Uh, just grow my own personal brand, I guess. Um. TikTok, I don't really take as seriously. Like I would would really like to grow my YouTube and start making longer form content. That's more about me. Um, Mm. TikTok is kind of just like a tool, I guess, where I can just like have fun and experiment. And the algorithm for TikTok is so crazy. Like if you, it doesn't matter who you are. If you make a video that people like, it's going to get out there. So I can really, like I'll have a video that I'll post. I think it's a banger and I'll like post it to YouTube and it'll get like 20 views. I'm like, yes. damn, that video must've sucked. I post a TikTok and it blows up. And it's, so it's like, it's, it's definitely a tool to build a following and I can, I guess, funnel that following in different directions if I want them to. I, I have been streaming a little bit. Maybe I can try to get them to come check out my live stream on Twitch. So The Twitch yeah. is so hard to grow, man. It is so, so hard. I mean, I, I have also tried to stream on Twitch, and there's so many nights where you only have like a few viewers, few viewers, few viewers. 
But then now I, I'm agree with you 100% about the TikTok thing. Oh my God. We post clips on YouTube shorts, TikTok, and Instagram for the podcast. And sometimes you post it to YouTube, seven views. You post it to TikTok, 7,000, 70,000. Yeah. You know, it's just like, holy shit. And it's not like crazy, uh, but I mean, holy shit. TikTok is booming and so is chess. And I'm, it's cool that you're, you know, you're expanding your stuff. You're trying different things. Dude, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, the the audience is definitely a lot younger on TikTok. People like under their twenties are just spending so much time on their phones swiping. It makes sense that they're getting more views. Yeah, and the poker audience itself is a little older. Um, there's not that as many, not many middle schoolers, high schoolers, super into poker. So maybe as like the TikTok audience grows up, they'd be more into more into the poker stuff. Yeah, I, I don't use TikTok personally because I know mm. all of my friends in high school, they're so into it, you know, or in middle school, yeah. I see these kids just sitting there like fucking robots, just slugs going on it. I'm like, dude, you have to stop. So I just try and create, you know, create stuff on there. I still do have Instagram, but, you know, TikTok's a devil, really. Yeah, I'll have to like quit it cold turkey. I'll just delete the app. Yeah. And then... I'll re-download it when I have to post a video. Then I get stuck back in a, like another couple of weeks, and I'm like, "Oh, I'm spending so much time on TikTok. Delete it again until yes. I post a video." But it's tough when you're trying to create content to also not get involved with like indulging so much content. And also, you learn the way by indulging too, like the AI voices. Like you see the chess stuff happening. I mean, mm. that's a great opportunity to take advantage of. And I mean, I just love to see it and love to talk to someone who is taking steps in the direction of building something which i'm all about dude so going back to poker i had a question when you have those off days that you're playing so for example i know you play a lot of online tourneys and you have maybe a few weeks where you're not winning a lot what is the way that you personally handle that loss uh it's a very very unforgiving game um it can get very brutal and i probably handle it better than most people because it's not my only source of income. Um, I, I only gamble with money that I'm, I'm okay with losing. Um, mm. And yeah, it, it really, I, a lot of people are gambling with like their rent money, which I understand that if you lose that, it can get very, very, very stressful. Um, I've had some brutal losses though. Like recently I had a, like a $8,000 downswing and, but again, it just goes back to like trusting the process and, understanding that I'm very fortunate to be in the position I'm at to be able to play a card game to make money. Um, at, at, I'm 24 years old. I get to play my favorite game and I have a ton of freedom. So I'm super lucky to be in the position that I'm in. So I, I don't get too upset about the losses and then it makes the wins feel so much better. My, um, my, the company I work for, I work remotely, but I work out of a company based in California and I have to go and visit like a few times a year. Mm -hmm. And when, when I go and visit, it's in San Jose, there's a casino there. And I don't know if it's just like all the tech bros that are just really bad at poker, but I've had my like five biggest wins all at this casino and three of them were in the same week. So I had one week where I made like $8,000 in like three nights. And that was just, I was just on top of the moon. So th th there's emotional highs and emotional lows. I'm just riding it for the, the journey. I love every second of it. Mm. Hell yeah, bro. So that you do have a good work-life balance with poker. Like you do work your job, you take money that you're not going to lose and you trust the process is what I'm hearing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think the gambling and poker, there's a lot of bad to it. There's a lot of like bad people. There's like dirt bags, there's scammers, but I, I am just such a big proponent of poker. I think if you, Play it, play it right and you uh, like manage your bankroll and you don't gamble money, you're not okay with losing and you understand that there can be extreme variance. I think it's a really amazing game that you can learn a lot from. You can learn risk management, risk intelligence. You learn, you get to meet a lot of really awesome people at the table. Uh, you come, you become really desensitized to money. Um, like I'm, I'm not like super rich or wealthy by any means but if i lost like a couple thousand dollars I, I, i'm totally cool with it as opposed to some of my friends who may have more money than me if they lost like i i'll go to a casino with my friends and like i'm happy to play a hundred dollar hand of blackjack not that it's smart not that it's a good like financial investment mm -hmm. uh, i just like i, I lose hundred dollars on big poker hands all the time so it's like nothing to me mm -hmm. as opposed to my friends if they played a hundred dollar hand of blackjack and be like whoa that's like i can't i can't be losing that and it's it's weird that I just look at money 
differently than the average person. So have you had any relationships with people that you talk at the table that may help you in like personal ways, maybe have gotten you some opportunities, you know, because I've never been in a casino before. I've been in one, but I haven't like sat down at a table and played personally. And I like to talk to people. So when you're at the table and you're talking with the guys or girls there, has any doors opened up to you by talking to them? It's kind of like golf, you know, you could play a round of golf with somebody. Is that similar you say? Um, specific examples, not really huge doors at the table, but I have met a lot of awesome people and I'm, it's mostly me picking people's brains. Um, I'll meet some, I'll meet some just awesome, wealthy business guy. And I'll just like pick his brain. Like what advice do you have for me? I usually want to talk about like real estate or something. I want to hell. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cause I'm looking to buy my first home soon. I just, I'm super I'm not a perfectionist, but I just want to make the best investment for myself. So I'm asking people, what do you think the housing market's going to be like right now? And everyone has an opinion. So I'm, yeah. I'm just all ears and I, I love talking to people. But real estate's like a key word for me because I am about real estate. Like I'm graduating this year, going to Oregon State next year to like do land development. By the end of June, once I graduate, I hope to have my real estate license and working for like a real estate firm this summer as like an internship. So like, nice. dude, I am so about real estate we have a lot of similarities man hell yeah yeah that's awesome yeah real estate's just amazing for like there's no way like i think real estate is the number one industry that people make money in you know it's very yeah. scalable too holy shit yeah so i'm being in like the gambling world my financials are just so up and down like i i, I buy a lot of crypto i'm very high risk high reward I, that's why I just really want to get a nice real estate property that could produce some like stable rental income in the future, because that buying land and buying property, that's going to, that's not going anywhere. It's always, I mean, I'm looking in Florida, hopefully it's, we're not underwater in 10 years from now, hopefully yeah. a hurricane doesn't wipe, wipe us out. But I, I think this is one of like the safer investments you can make. And if I'm doing that, then I'd feel much more comfortable gambling big. Yeah, I mean, I have I see my, my goals in my future, maybe not necessarily goals, but just stuff I want to consist of real estate investments, whether that's like a duplex, triplex, you know, taking a lean out, trying to get like a small apartment complex or something. And then maybe that'll all just fund my gambling addiction. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, <laughs> you're doing celebrity stuff, right? You're working with celebrities. What's What's been like your fa like the best celebrity that you've met in the poker world? in your opinion. Oh, do you know Doug Polk? Yeah. So I got to interview Doug Polk, which was super cool for me. I've always been a big fan of his. He, he's always been kind of like the poker troll. He kind of grew up just like, or he, he's, he made a, he kind of built his fame off of like roasting other poker players. And he's a really, really freaking good poker player himself, but he would just make funny content, poking fun at the poker world. And that's kind of what I've wanted to do. I've never taken it too seriously. There's a lot of, in the poker world, there's so much, oh, I'm better than you, I'm better than you. People have huge egos. I'm just like here for fun. And I, I think he really embodies that. And I got to interview him, and which was really cool because he, he's one of my favorite guys. I also got to talk to Daniel Negreanu. Um, mm. And he, Daniel's a big chess fan and he said he would play me in chess. So um, I got to take him up on that offer. Dang, you totally record that or have you played him yet or are you going to no so he was in a uh i specifically remember some video he did with like the top chess streamer hikaru where mm -hmm. it was like a training lesson and he showed him this like specific gambit and i went up to daniel and i'm like hey i play this because of you i don't really play it but i just wanted to like make that connection with him and he he got me he was like oh i gotta tell you about this and this and he was like going off about it then he ended it with hey we should play one time and i'm like yeah totally i thought he was just like saying that to be nice but hey he offered i'm gonna take him up on that like the next time i see him at a tournament i'm gonna bring a little portable chess board and say you want to play like you, you you said you would and he, the he would boy totally bro yes sir <laughs> dude <laughs> yeah and I, I actually i got to play alex botez we played a full chess match and I, I kid you not, I almost beat her. Like she's really? obviously she's like a million times better than me. But I we recorded the whole game, and I've been editing a video on it. I'm really excited for it because I actually had a decent shot of beating her. There was like a there was an upset alert, but I, I couldn't execute. God, dude, <laughs> it was fun though. What do, what do you think got you into this chess stuff? Just like online, you just see it's popping off. Is that what sparked the interest, or were you, have you liked chess since you were younger? I actually so I did 
a lot of like chess camps when I was in like second, third grade. I won some chess trophy when I was in third grade. And mm -hmm. then I just like completely lost interest. I just played a ton of video games. I didn't care about chess at all. It was like chess for nerds. It's too much thinking. I'm not that smart. Then kind of the boom happened when Queen's Gambit came out. A lot of people got really into chess. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I started playing a little more and I started to really actually like it. Um, I'm not amazing by any means, but I just enjoy it. And a lot of the big streamers, like the Ludwigs, the XQCs, they're all, they all play a ton of chess. It's kind of like taken over on Twitch and stuff. So I kind of just got into it that way. And what is your day job that you do? I'm a systems administrator for a, a company called Maxar. So NASA builds the rockets. We build the satellites. So we put the satellite on the rocket and we, we launch satellites. And it's really cool. I, like I, when I go fly out there, I get to sit in the MCC, the Mission Control Center, and I get to watch the countdown and everyone celebrates when the, when the rocket goes off. And I get to, the work I'm doing, I'm not, I'm doing like glorified IT work where there's a bunch of computers that the engineers are working on and I make sure they're in tip top shape for them. So it's, it's, it's a really awesome job and I get to do it remotely. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, but I, I enjoy it. And so what, what, what did you major in in college to be able to get this, uh, job opportunity? I majored in computer science. Nice. Um, my older brother is like a brilliant, brilliant computer science mind. And he, he like, he worked for Google and he worked for like a bunch of tech startups. He, he really influenced me into getting into computer science and I was into it and I, I enjoyed it. I, I got, it's, it's a really hard degree to get. College was not easy for me. It was, it definitely clicked a lot better with other people. I just wanted to play poker, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I got my degree in computer science and I have a pretty solid coding background, but this job doesn't involve too much coding. It's a lot of other things that I'm more equipped for. So you said that you did uh, college volleyball so uh, when did that start because my school which is a 3a in oregon it has i don't know 300 kids in it like it's tiny hmm. really and i don't know about upstate new york it's like the school's there but i mean our school is pretty tiny tiny we don't even have a volleyball team like a male volleyball team yeah men's volleyball is really hit or miss obviously women's volleyball is one of the most popular sports every high school has a team mm -hmm. men's volleyball really popular in california really popular it's pretty popular in like florida but new york is probably like third like it's it's big in like chicago a lot of other cities but upstate new york was like a volleyball hotspot out of nowhere mm. rochester, rochester where i'm from is it just has a ton of men's volleyball talent so it, we my high school is pretty big we had like 1200 kids we had we actually won states my senior year the town or not the town that there's a private school 15 minutes from my high school all boys private school and they would get some of the best players from all over town. We, they were our rivals every single year and they beat us my, they beat us my freshman year, beat us my sophomore year, beat us my junior year. And then we beat them our senior year and we yep. went on to win states. So it was, it was kind of just like the cherry on top of senior year. When did, when did you that, start, when did you start playing volleyball? So the var varsity volleyball coach was actually my elementary school gym teacher. Oh, damn. So we would do the basketball unit. We would do the gymnastics unit. Then we would do like five months of the volleyball unit because he was planting all the seeds for his varsity team. I I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I played a lot in like gym class elementary school. Then I yeah. really got into it like seventh grade. And we had a really awesome class. My, my grade had about 10 seniors that all started playing in seventh grade and we just like played travel with each other year round and we played beach volleyball in the summer and we just had a really really solid squad and then stars aligned our senior year that's how i feel like right now and with my school and our baseball team we've had a revi revi um, rivalry with a school named napa but we're getting better we're getting better we're getting better we lose we lose and now it's my senior year and now, dude, holy shit, dude, we're... Fuck Napa, dude. Yeah, fuck, fuck Napa, you guys... Napa <laughs> son. Yes, sir. What bro. position do you play? I play center. Nice, nice. Yeah. I, I I played a good amount of baseball. I'm Honestly, I miss pitching so much. I mm. I was I was never, like, an amazing hitter or anything, but I could, I could pitch, and that's... that's I miss it, man, because I, I was pretty scrawny. I was, like, skinny and scrawny, and I could maybe throw, like, 70, but I've, like, bulked up a lot. I'm thinking if I stuck with it, I'd be – I could throw 90 by now, but we'll, we'll never know. I'm just saying that. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have, I've uh, I've lived on all of the West Coast, so I've lived in California, Oregon, and I also spent some time in New Mexico. But the majority of my life has been here in Oregon. 
But when I lived in California, actually, I played on this travel baseball team. And there's a few guys from there who just throw gas. I don't talk to them that much anymore, but they're going D1. And they're throwing 91, 92. And they're like 6'4", but I don't know. I'm only 5'10". I'm kind of a, you know, decently sized guy, but yeah, I don't know. That's all you That's know. like... I'm six three. I don't. Yeah. I don't, don't want to make it. I mean, five ten's like pretty tall. Like it is. Uh... Yeah, you just try to feel good, ten, bro. <laughs> you just try to feel good. All right, all right. <laughs> what what position do you play in volleyball? You, you spike it like that shit. Oh yeah. So you got you got your setter. You got your libero. The libero just does like passing and stuff. Yeah. Then you got you got the outside. And that's what I play. They do a little bit of everything. Mm. Yeah. I mean, now where I live, I mean, just the girls play volleyball, and you know. Everybody comes to their games because, you know, but, uh, Hey, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, I'm, I play a ton of beach volleyball and that's, that's definitely one of the best things about beach volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> hey bro. But Hey, uh, we got six, five minutes left. I guess you should wrap it up, bro. But thank you, Jack. What's really Jack Bitker, the boy yeah, Bitker. I go by Biddy. My, yeah. Biddy. My, my boy older Biddy. brother was always Biddy. And then I was his younger brother. They call me itty Biddy. Itty Biddy. Yeah, I just went with Betty. <laughs> here, man. Okay, what, let's uh say your Instagram if you know it. If you don't know, it'll be right here on the Zoom. But yeah, y'all need to go give yeah. my boy Jack a follow. This, a future announcer for poker, future poker pro. He's gonna take down Phil Hellmuth and he's gonna piss him off. Hell yeah! So one cool thing about poker is every live tournament you play is tracked on this site called Hendon Mob, and you can kind of see all your like your scores that you've had. And my mm-hmm. Hendon Mob, my total cash is live is like. 10k right now which is like a lot of money but I'm, i've probably lost like 15k of live caches so it's like not it's nothing serious but my goal is like 100k by the end of like two years from now then i want to hit that million mark by the time i'm 30 like hey bet, bro goal. that that's down here bro i got you in the editing bam boy there it is it's happening, it's happening. just just send me that <laughs> shit on instagram bro. again man i'm dapping you up i got you, got you. hey the boy okay <laughs> that's episode 27 in sounds podcast thank you my boy for getting on it's a wrap